Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. I'm kind of in a weird mood today, too. Great. (laughs) We might get a lot of complaints. I'm, just just warning you. I'm thrilled. I might offend several people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm um, feeling kind of cocky. Kind of. Uh, I, yeah, some things have, like, you know, irritated me this week, and I don't know. Okay. I might be okay. We'll, well see. Let's let's put our nurturing hats on <laughs> and politely okay. tell people how to make their wedding dresses. <laughs> how to make their own wedding yes. dress. Yes. So making... You mean their own dress? Yes. Like, like if I was getting married, I'd make the dress that I was going to wear to my own wedding. Yeah, or maybe like, you know, your own outfit, your own ensemble for any big event, you know, where like a lot of people are going to see you or something like well, that. And you don't have to get married in a dress. No, and you know, people don't, yeah, people don't get married in dresses. People wear dresses for other things, right. but it is... We are kind of answering like a common like yeah, yeah we are thing that sort of comes up in the group, right? But maybe if you can think of it just like any other special outfit, maybe it would take away a little bit of the um, what do I want to say? The intimidating factor. Well, I uh, never perhaps. had like a wedding, uh-huh. like a big like a like I didn't have a wedding like all of you had, you know? Uh-huh. Like we went to a restaurant and had a few people ate. Right. You know, kind of thing. So, like, I wore, like, a suit. Yeah. You know, like, kind of. Which I had, like, in my closet. Sure. You know, I didn't, like, put, I didn't put on the airs you did. Well, yeah, I know. We were just a bunch (laughs) of hoity-toity people. I didn't think I was a Rockefeller. I knew better. (laughs) We're just acting as if. Actually, something funny, the dress I am wearing right now is not a self-sewn dress, but it is a little fancy. And it's from Paris. And oh, it's it's it's, it's from the, Paris. It's, a, it's not self sewn, but it's from Paris. It's actually it's a really cool. So how much did that dress cost me? Yeah. Like about ten thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, the plane <laughs> ticket. Uh, it's it's a wool and silk blend though. It's really neat. Um, it's kind of rough, rough spun looking. Um, anyway, but it is kind of fancy. But what I wanted to say was, I bought it at a store in Paris, and somebody later told me that they went to that same store. They were like, I went to this cute little store, you know, for these these dresses, and, and that's what I bought, and we decided to just get married right then. And so, oh, how cute. And, like, this dress is rather simple. It's a sleeveless yeah. princess line dress with, like, kind of an A-line skirt, right? Yeah. Um, has kind of a cummerbund belt on it. Like. Yeah, and I mean, hers, I think, was red, and this one's yeah. gray. And I actually own another dress um, by the same brand that's also, it's like linen, Yeah. Uh, too. So anyway, I was looking at myself in the mirror, thinking about how I'd met this woman who'd gone shopping at the same store as me and then gotten her wedding dress, and I thought, man, I, I almost wish that everyone... Or maybe that I had even taken the wedding dress a little less seriously... You know, oh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I don't know. I mean, every. But you you say that after the fact. You can't I, say I that think, before the okay, fact. Okay, here's what I think about weddings, and yeah, and Hillary said this to me. Uh huh. So Hillary got married six weeks out of college. Right. Okay. So of course, I think we invited like 300 people, and I said, oh well, only like 200 will show up, and like 280 showed up yeah. or something. Like people came from ends of the earth that we did not think would show up, right? But. And, you know, he had fraternity brothers, and uh-huh. so, you know, you invite all of them and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, um, so she wanted all those people there. Yeah. that That's what was important at that time in her life. They were, like, I think they were both like 22, 22, right? I think, I think she was three days away from being 22. You know, her birthday was three days after they got married. Okay, then, you know, you got married. When you got married, you'd been out of school for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And Derek had been out of school much longer. Actually, technically, six. Years, well, actually, he was in. He was in <laughs> a graduate Derek's program. Still in school. <laughs> yeah, he's still in a graduate program. But I mean, you know, yes, he, he, yeah, was, he was older. He's eight years older than me. Right, right. He was thirty yeah. years old or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, or close to it. And I think it's a. Di- you had a lot more of your mentors. I felt yeah, like different at, crowd. At, different. Yeah, at, at your well, wedding. and 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 you know, Lindsay had been working for ten years. Yes. Okay, so there were all these people from her job, mm-hmm. you know. And their families. Yes, and and sh- they had a smaller wedding. 
yeah, a much smaller. Um, that's that's what's really you know to to me a wedding. So like you know I'm not a religious person. Uh, the wedding for us was it was for our families more right so it was you know it's a time for the celebration and well, we wanted and everybody you, you and Lindsay, both the only attendants you had were the grandchildren yeah were the were the kids right yeah. where hillary had bridesmaids you know like very traditional so so you can keep this all in mind as you go forth with your outfit making so if you'll let me finish yeah yeah my no thought. i'm sorry so yeah. hillary just went to a, a wedding this uh-huh. weekend and mm-hmm. she said hey it's really different when you get married in your 30s for the first time than when you get married, you know, in your 20s. 20s. Right. She said, I don't think it was quite the row that she yeah. had, you know. <laughs> um, I, you know, it was different. Yeah. To, you know, di- and it was mostly people that they were, family and people that they worked with, you know. That's why she was there. Yeah. Because, you know, it was her husband's peer at work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, that's why they were there. So... Your wedding depends. Yeah, a lot of people do destination weddings mm-hmm. now, and then so there might be a destination wedding dress, and then there might be another dress for a party when you come home or a reception when you come home, or people change into different dresses. Yeah, so I think that's all really good thoughts, especially because when we we are going to let's just start off the podcast with. Um, the advice that people give about acting, like if you can do anything else, you know, besides acting, do it, right? Like that's You're what right. You hear, right. Okay. Well, if anything else would excite you about making it for your wedding, <laughs> don't, don't make your wedding don't dress. Don't make your own dress. Yes. Uh, now, of course, we featured in the zine this month a, a woman who did. Right. She made her wedding dress and she made like, they somehow had two ceremonies oh, uh, okay. or something, you know, but she made a rather complex wedding dress. I I would say that if it's your first ever sewing project. When yeah, this, don't, okay. Okay, yeah. This is very common. This is something that happens. Is, oh, I'm going to make my daughter's prom dress. Oh, okay, so how much have you sewn? Well, I, I, I have, I've only made a purse. Yeah. Okay, well, your daughter's going to kill you. <laughs> Okay, because people are going to be crying and carrying on at three o'clock in the morning because we were crying and carrying on. And I was making my, you know, eleven hundredth dress. Your millionth you, dress. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, because when I took that top and threw it in the trash, you got all upset. Yeah, we didn't but, say that. Did we talk about that? I don't know if we did or not. But um, <laughs> I, Mallory liked the top, and I said, it's just not right. And, and I threw, threw it in, it in the, the trash, trash, and she, like, went out of her mind. It was, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. I said, it'll be fine. I'm cutting another one. Oh, that one. was the prom dress. That was the prom dress. That was the prom dress. Okay. Right, right. Ooh. Yeah, it was the prom dress. But, um, you know, I would say it's ridiculous to put that pressure on yourself if you don't have good experience in that area. Yeah. Now, if someone is like, you know, screw you, ZD and, Z and Mal, I have such – right excitement to be doing this and da 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 are always dreamt of doing it yeah, or whatever I mean, fine it's great it would be really great if you had some experience making a, a dress right. or a garment of similar type you know if somebody wants to make any type of garment for their special occasion whatever it'd be good if you had done something like that before i think though more than anything is to give yourself the time right you need to start this if you're going to do it First of all, maybe think about not doing it. Right. But if you're going to do it, start the process now. Well, there's also, you talk about time, and then there is the bride that says, well, I know I'm going to, they're on a crash diet, or they're on some sort of yeah. diet, or re redoing their body in some way, yeah. I don't know, whatever. Um you run out of time when you're doing it. Or sometimes the bride has been pregnant and, you know, this is the postpartum thing. And the, Yeah. The, so give yourself a break. It might be easier to go find it. You can add to it. Yeah. You can make it your own. You know, you can go home and do some detail to it if you want or something so, like that. I'm just saying don't make yourself crazy over a dress and not get to enjoy what's really happening that it takes you away from being in the time and place of what's happening. Yeah, because there are other things you're going to have to worry about, right? Right. right. Um, the other thing I was going to, or you know, part of that is Linnea, who we featured in the zine uh-huh. in the "Feel Free to Compliment Me" part. She wrote that it took her a year, or she spent a year, like thinking about it and doing thinking, it, muslining, right? Then getting the right fabric, then making it. 
da 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 da. Like she she did that. She is an engineer by trade. Uh huh. So I think that project planning might well, be a, nice for her a core to competency right, right, of hers, right, right? Right. Right. So I think that's really great uh, that that she did that. But yes, I think that you know when we say we're going to discourage you, I think we're just trying to give you like an out of I, not I don't putting think, the pressure I don't, on yourself. I wouldn't discourage. I think. What I would say is, let's get very realistic here. There you go. Okay. Um, our make your going away dress, or you know, rehearsal our, dinner, or make your rehearsal dinner dress, or something, or or have a backup. That's a possibility too. Mm-hmm. You know, if if so, I just I just have seen people be crazy. Yeah. And, or not only their own dress, but you know, the aunt or the mother or the grandmother, you know. Be, in, okay, guys, I'm 65 years old, cause I, so I can talk about old people. Okay. So say Zelda's go, Zelda would is getting married. It would be 20 years from now, right? Yeah. I would be 85. Right. Don't freaking put that pressure on me. <laughs> what? Well, I've got one foot in the grave, right? <laughs> Let me have a good time. Now, if I say I want to help, I want to yeah. be there, I want to, you know, I'll coach you through it, Mallory, mm-hmm. you know, or, or you know, I'll do the, you make the dress, I'll do the handwork, what, whatever. But sometimes, even though Granny or Grandpa mm-hmm. or, you know, Aunt Betty has been sewing for 100 years, think about it. She's tired. Right. You know, she's been sewing for 100 years. And if she wants to be part of the wedding because she sews, there's so many other things to do. Him, the flower girl's dress, whatever, make the table runners. I don't know. You know, I, I didn't want to have a bunch of attendants, you know, right. at, at my wedding and stuff. But I did sort of think that the way things worked out at my wedding really complemented like what had happened in our lives. You'd been diagnosed with, you know, your illness. Right. Less than two years. Um, yeah, it was right at two years. Or, it was, yeah. It was less than two years. You're right. I was just Because it was, it was May. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Actually, it, you don't know how sick I was because we hid it from you. Well, and the, all, every, the rest of the family, we were hiding how sick I was from you Mallory. Were, you were... Um, you ended up having that weird reaction and the, and the hand pain and right, the, all right, that. Like, right. I was really happy that it was, like, my dress... And Catherine's dress, yeah. like it just worked out right. really nicely. Like, how could I? Uh, I would not have. I didn't want them, but how could I have asked you to like, you know, make fifteen dresses like for I did my for wedding? Hillary's, yeah, yeah, like you did for Hillary's. So yes, you want to you want to keep that all in your brain. You know, uh, yeah. That's that's a really good point. Yeah, I I think I think it's a great idea if you want to have a certain kind of wedding and there's a lot of things involved to get people you know people that know how to do things to get them to do that for you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and what I would say is, you know, in in lieu of a wedding gift, we would like you to sing at our wedding. Yeah. So that takes the, that, I mean, that's like a gift to them. They don't have to worry about getting you a present if they don't want to. There you go. You know, that kind of thing. And, and I had a, I have a friend that sang, used to do that all the time, you know, and she would say, my gift to you is a song. Mm-hmm. And she would sing at these weddings. Well, and, and your gift to a lot of people have been the alterations. I've done alterations for especially a lot of, you know, the your all Our of my friends. daughter's friends, yeah. you know. Um, I would do their alterations, which was generally between, you know, $150 to $300 worth oh, of work. absolutely. You know, so, and they knew it would be right because they were, most of those kids I had sewn for already anyway, like in costuming or something. So they felt very secure in what I was doing for them. Okay, well, let's take a little break and let's then shift to like, okay, so you're going to make your wedding dress. All right. Let's get into it, So okay? you've really decided so to really do this, decided. huh? Okay. <laughs> After listening to the first 12 minutes of the podcast. <laughs> okay, we'll be back. Tell me all about your dream come true wardrobe planner. I have been dreaming about creating a wardrobe planner for years. Oh, no. Since you were like eight and started drawing with crayons. <laughs> yes. I love uh, I love to sew and I love to write with paper products and, and pens and everything. And we have published a wardrobe planner. We have a couple of different options on our website. There is a universal wardrobe planner that you can purchase for $19.99 and print over and over again. It'll help you plan any project you wish. And then we also have themed wardrobe planners. And do you know what's special about those, Mom? What's special? What? Um, 
They include some hand-drawn illustrations by yours truly for whatever we're doing in the self-sewn wardrobe group that month, like PJs or underwear or our month of planning. Because we theme our months. Yes, so you can tackle a new wardrobe section each month in order to build your perfect self-sewn wardrobe. So for more information about these, you can go to sewhere.com slash planner and also check out the membership options because the universal wardrobe planner is included with the backstitch and straight stitch and zigzag memberships. So go to sewhere.com slash planner. Sewing out loud. All right. Hey, I have a question. This is this is where my brain is right now about okay. this. If you want to make a, uh, an outfit for a special occasion, mm-hmm. does it have to be made from fabric that is like fifty or a hundred dollars a yard? Does it have to be made from silk or like stuff with like gold spun into it? I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think so at all. I think it should be made out of the fabric you want. Most wedding dresses Here we today yes, yes. are made of polyester satin, right? That's what I wanted to bring up. And guess what? They'll last longer than the silk dress, really. Now, you guys all had silk, but, you know, um, yeah, that's what most of them are made. Most of the affordable gowns. That's, that's what, what I, 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 most gowns that I would say are $2,000 or under when we talk are about, not going to be silk, you know. When we talk about fabric choices. Right. Don't get hung up on just a fancy fiber content. Right. Okay? You may find that a more affordable fabric gives you the look you want. That's right. Versus that really expensive stuff. And also, I guess here's another place not to get hung up on fabric is you've got grandma's dress Mm -hmm. or mom's dress or sister's dress. You know, I altered a wedding dress two different times in a family. To, yeah. It went from a sister to a sister-in-law and then how I, back to the <laughs> daughter. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember how, how it, the, what the lineage was. It, oh, okay. Yeah. It was the first person wore it and then the sister-in-law wore it and then it went back to the first person's daughter. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's neat. I'm trying, I couldn't remember how that zigzagged around, but, um, very little was done just to fit the first, because, of course, they got married sort of at the same time. Yeah. It was only like five or six years apart. Then when the daughter got married, she wanted something that looked a little bit different, like we took the train off and made it a veil. And I mean, it, it, was, it was, yeah. yeah, it was a much more um, extravagant alteration. But um, what I was going to say is they were all worried about matching this lace. Sure. You know, that that... I think we need to lengthen something, you know. And I said, it'll work out. We don't, we're not, and if we can't match it, we will add the, we'll get a different lace and add it someplace else, you and know. Create. We, yeah. Cause I thought we could go on the search for this lace. This gown is now like 30 years old. Yeah. How I are won't. we going to, well, <laughs> and the lace had probably aged. It might, and it was not a white dress, it was an off white. It yeah. was like an ivory dress. So, who knows if we could have ever matched that color? Certainly. And actually, I think what happened is we wound up actually putting a piece of fabric under it somehow. Um, we didn't even use lace. We thought we were going to extend it with lace. And we actually had this piece of fabric that came out from under the lace, and it was really a neat look. So when you have, when you are deciding on And I fabric, didn't worry about fabric content. I yeah. didn't worry about it matching. Yeah. They are being the same content. When you're project planning, like Linnea did, right. and when you're, you know, doing all of this, you are going to have to muslin out this dress or this outfit, you know, if I keep saying. Well, and here's the other thing. Uh-huh. How do you decide on the style? Well, let's talk about, let's yeah, talk about fabric ahead. a little bit first. I know okay. they're all very intertwined, yeah. but I just wanted to say that you really, when you're doing something like this, you want to make sure that you are really working with the fabric that you're going to work with. Yeah, yes. You you don't want to leave in the anything, muslin. Yeah, in the yes. muslin. Uh, you don't want to leave anything to chance. So when that you allow yourself to get something more affordable, you don't feel as pressured, right? right. Taking the pressure off, right? Like we talked about. And um, when you made Carolyn's wedding dress, oh yeah, I mean the fabric for that was like it's like forty dollars worth of fabric, right? Oh yeah, it was. It was the fabric. It was, was a crepe. It was a poly crepe. I think I we paid more for the lining or something. I think 
think you paid more. the same. I think we paid the same amount for the lining. Yeah, yeah. or like the buttons. You yeah, know, I don't yeah. know. But it was it was crazy that the fabric was that inexpensive. Right. But it was a poly crepe, and the drape on it was perfect. It was, it was exactly what we needed. You know. Perfect color? It was, you know, it was a copy of, uh-huh. uh, of Stella McCartney's dress she made for her, I guess it's her stepmother. Um Hers was probably silk crepe. Yes. You yes. know. But Carolyn, you know, we ordered samples. Carolyn liked, you know, the feel of it. I told her what would drape best. You know, she took yeah. my advice. Um, she really did only wear it for one afternoon. And I think that that. You know, I and it was beautiful. That poly crepe, I think, was five ninety nine a yard. Yeah, it was, it was inexpensive. We, and, and we ordered it off the internet. We, yeah. yeah, and it was 60 yeah. inches wide. Yep, you know, yes. it was plenty for us to really, yes. you, you, yeah. us, to really, like, play with, you know, here. I think that was another one where I made it. I actually made a muslin muslin. Yeah, you did. And then I made, made a crepe. Muslin, muslin of just the top, I think, is uh-huh. what I did. Yeah. Well, and you know, you can probably right. you've got a little bit more experience in that. So that that less expensive fabric is going to just take the pressure off a little bit. That's it might true. be more available. Da, 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 da. Now let's talk about style, because yes, you know, this Please is one order extra fabric. If you have um, some left over, it's not the end of the world. Yes. <laughs> this would be one place where, you know, don't be like, I can't add to my Fabric library right. or something. Yes, get extra, get a ton of extra. So the style of the dress, talk yeah. about that. Here's what I think happens when people make their own clothing. Mm-hmm. They see a drawing or they see a model or they, you know, they see this dress and they like it, but they don't know how it looks on them. They're imagining themselves as that, you know. Depiction. Depiction that they're looking at. And I really think it's important, and whether this be your wedding dress or any other dress, is you go try on styles. When I made Jean's dress, Jean Skolka's dress, Uh that's what we did. We went and tried on dresses. Yeah, trying on, well, especially. (laughs) She thought she wanted something at the waist, Uh and we wound up with an umpire. Yeah. So, you know, she's like, I don't like this at my waist. And I said, well, good. Aren't we glad you're here? Aren't we glad we know? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Aren't we glad we're here? Well, and I think that a wedding dress versus, like, making your own suit, okay, Uh, you know, if someone's wearing a suit for something, okay, you've worn suits before. You've worn suits before, right. You may never have worn, uh, Linnea's dress had, you know, sheer back with buttons all down it. Like, I I wasn't, I don't think it's quite, well, it's kind of a mermaid, you know. Okay, that's not. It was close fitting, I can't remember exactly. That's not something that someone's put on every day, you know, to go to work or something like that. Some people have never worn a formal dress at all. Or... Mm -hmm. Or you have not worn a dress with the body you have now. So you wore a dress in high school, you know, um, and then you become, what, you know, some medical professional and you wear scrubs all day. There you go. And you wear scrubs (laughs) and you wear scrubs and then you change into, you know, your jeans or your yoga pants or whatever. Right. And you might wear, maybe you wear a skirt or a dress, but you haven't worn a formal dress Mm -hmm. on that body. Yeah. In a long time, and that body could be different than it was in high school. So it might not look the same. So when you are making your own, you go try on dresses, okay, and you know pick that affordable fabric if you can, right. and you can order swatches if you don't know this. Okay, most websites will allow you to order swatches. That's what we did for Carolyn's dress. We we're in like four or five to pick the color. Could kind of tell the drape. Now, sometimes you have to pay for a swatch. Sometimes you don't. And. It depends. You know, it might be worth it if you're really depending on drape or something or sheerness or I don't know. Oh, if you decide, you can order just a yard then. and Yes. That's what I was going to say. Get your swatches and then you go. If you really can't decide, if you're really not yeah. sure, order your yard. See how it drapes. Put it on your body. Put right. it on dress form. Dip, 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 you know, whatever. Right. And when you are choosing this style, do try to keep in mind your construction experience. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. This is where the style, this is where I'm kind of thinking about what I'm wearing right now. I think there's probably a sewing pattern out there mm-hmm. for something like this. It's obviously not marketed as a wedding dress, 
But if this was made out of a color that someone wanted for their wedding dress, right. they want white or cream or like something or whatever, and they want it shiny and they wanted a prettier belt and something in their hair, right? It could be a wedding dress, okay? So don't don't put too much pressure on yourself in that way. You know, making it look special doesn't have to be super crazy. Do you that one wedding dress? I'm obviously, not going to say who it is. Okay, that you altered. You'll know what I'm talking about in just a second. It was like the kitchen sink wedding dress. It had an embroidered, beaded, embroidered beaded lace on top of like a pleated strapless bodice that had lacing in the back. And then it had like a full skirt with tulle on top and pickup points. Okay. I was like, everything you could have put on a dress. Yes, they put on the dress. <laughs> was on this dress yeah. and she she of course she loved it she looked wonderful but you don't have to do all of that you no. could you could wear a pretty uh, who just posted in the group marty i think in the group her wedding dress and she made like a lace shrug to go over right. it well obviously the lace shrug really made it look more special it made it different it, than it what made it was it, right. yeah it was like oh not that her dress originally didn't look like a wedding dress but like you know you think strapless dress but then right. you think oh lace well, shrug and a lot of times da, da, da. okay depending on what, if you're getting married in a religious ceremony there can be certain um you know requirements uh-huh. i guess or whatever you know that your shoulders are covered or your yeah. back is covered or yeah i mean that your arms are covered that that's very common so incorporating like a little bit of lace uh, or like a rhinestone belt or right. using the colors that traditionally mean wedding to you. Right. Those things can make it. It's not necessarily making the huge Cinderella right. dress. Well, the dress can also be components. Okay, yeah, talk about that a little bit. Other than one dress. Yeah. Like you said, the rhinestone belt doesn't have to be on the dress. Uh-huh. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be rhinestones, any sort of beads or whatever. You know, that can be made separately or bought separately. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that's something, you know, Aunt Betty can make. Right. Like, she can hand bead a belt for you or something or, you know. Um, but all of the, it's just like you can have a strapless dress and have an over blouse type thing. Right. Or an over top, you know, a sheer. So it. And sometimes that's easier to make and easier to fit. Right. Okay, if you have the components. And like you talked about with Hillary's dress, mm-hmm. it's two pieces. And it was two pieces because I told her she would be sorry. Yeah. Um, now, I just, okay, sometimes I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I, what's the program? Say yes to the dress. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some, probably everyone's seen this because it's probably 100 years old. But um, they had, um, the theme was, celebrity dresses or uh-huh. something like that so they had one girl that was a ballerina i think i told you about that you, yeah tell, okay but it's a good story yeah she didn't want a ballerina dress she didn't want a cinderella dress she didn't want the cupcake dress i'm, I'm using words that get used in the industry uh uh-huh. yeah yeah um she said i want something architectural and i knew exactly what she meant mm-hmm. she wears Beads and ruffles she wears and a tutu. And t- <laughs> right, right. She she wears uh, tulle Tiara, skirts yeah. and tulle <laughs> skirts and all of this stuff. And she said, I get to wear that all the time. I want to wear something that's me. Mm-hmm. You know, and she picked a very, you know, this satin, nothing really on it. You know, the, it was the architecture of the dress that spoke for itself. Right. And it was a slim dress, and it had this big sort of weird, like, shaped thing off the back. Like a know. bow of it, some kind. It was kind almost like a collar some... that came oh, off okay. the back. You yeah. Know, it was really neat looking. Was, um, and then she actually wore her mother's veil that was sort of like a mantilla veil. Uh-huh. So it had, it was actually quite ornate. And it looked fine with the looked dress because the dress was plain. Yeah, so it, it right. It Even though if off. you saw them separately, you'd go, "Oh, this is two very different styles." styles. But when they put yeah. them together, it worked. Then another another per, uh, bride who was not really a bride, but it was for stage. It was for uh, Broadway. It was it was a play, and they needed a wedding dress. Mm-hmm. The costumer was there, and the character that was going to wear it was you know trying them on, and. Um, a few celebrities or something were there that were in the, you know, I'm sure that was to make the show more interesting to us. But 
they picked more of sort of a Cinderella, you know, a little too. But they talked about it needs to be light. She has to dance. Yeah. You know, it needs to be this. They, they talked about the needs of the dress, mm-hmm. what it needed to be, but yet they wanted it to look very brighty. Right. You know, so they picked a really sort of a light. Um, it wasn't a real full skirt. It was more of a light skirt it was or- organza skirt is what it was instead of many layers of tool it was just uh-huh. uh and it was strapless and here's what i want everybody to really hear about these strapless dresses <laughs> the costumer who is very smart who knows a lot of stuff who encounters all the problems right said it's the perfect dress we need a little strap for safety yeah and i did this with a lot of brides they would say, oh, I, you know, I want, I want strapless, I want strapless. And I'd say, what about at your reception when Uncle Joe steps on your dress? Guess what's going to happen? Your boob's going to pop out. Right. Or what else brides don't understand is how they're going to be moving around in this dress. And they're going to be oftentimes going to tables and bending over. Right. Okay. And things can pop out or move. And moving around, that dress is going to shift. So I would oftentimes make them a strap that was detachable. Yes. So I, lo- I love this. Yes. So I would make them a little beaded strap. You know, I it, plain or beaded. However, they, do you want it fancy or do you right. not want it fancy or whatever? And I would pin them, you know, to the inside of the dress where their dress was going to be bustled. So whoever was bustling their dress, uh-huh. right, could take those straps out. And they just would hook onto their dress. So it's like they could wear the dress strapless right. in the less active ceremony right. part. And then, oh, we're going to bustle the dress so you can walk around, receiving line, blah, 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 all that right. jazz. And we're going to put these straps on. Right. And and she could take them off again. Yep. She decided she didn't need them. Great. But they were there. Mm-hmm. And you didn't have this bride walking around, pulling her dress up at her bosom. And I have seen that, and I feel so bad for those those women when that happens. Yeah, uh, the uh, I just want to mention if you're a zigzag member, um, actually, when this podcast comes out, we will have shown we will you. Have already. <laughs> you will already know how to make a strapless bodice um, fit close fit to closer the chest. to the right to, to the top of the to, chest. Yes. Uh-huh. So we're we're showing you that in the live broadcast, and that's what the zigzag membership's all about. You get kind of a little sewing class with ZD and Mallory uh, each month. So yeah, I think when you're choosing the style, I I hate to to stifle anyone's creativity or scare them off because you know when I was learning to knit, okay, uh huh. I didn't like everything out there that was knitted, just like probably not everybody likes everything out there that's sewn, you know. And the things that really were attractive to me were lacy things. Uh huh. And so I remember showing a customer, I was like, well, this is the first thing I'm going to knit. And she goes, oh, no, 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 don't knit that. You'll, you know, you won't like doing that. Uh, knit this thing instead. It's really easy. Well, it may have been easy. But I thought it was really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not want to make it. Right. Uh, and knitting knitting can be very, can be hard. You know, it definitely can be. Uh, but it's a little different than sewing. It's like knitting, you know, combines certain stitches. Uh, whereas sewing, you know, can, can combine a lot of different variables. But, you know, I chose a lace thing that wasn't too terribly crazy, you know, it wasn't like I was knitting one of those like heirloom Australian shawls. You weren't knitting your like, wedding dress. I wasn't knitting my there wedding dress. There are crocheted and knitted wedding there dresses. There are. There are. So you want to find that balance between making something, if you're, you've decided to do this, making something you love versus going way over your head and, and yeah, killing yourself. I just yourself. don't think that you should attempt something that is really, really new uh-huh. to you. I mean, you know, something small, something in that's, you know, insignificant, yes. But... Um, like, okay, the lace up back. Yeah. Okay. You don't just put those loops on there and lace it up. There's a lot more to that. So do your research. That's right. That that has to be structured. Yeah. You know, it's not going to work. It's not going to stay up if you just put loops on a dress. Right. 
right? That, that's not what works. And there are patterns out there that oh, yes. mimic uh, yes. current, you yes. know, uh, wedding dress trends that but you can use to re- guide do you. Do your research yeah. and, you know, try that out before you decide to incorporate that. And I just think it is it is very valid to say, hey, you could go a little simpler and go a little bit simpler style, simpler construction, right. and go a little bigger with an embellishment or a, a fabric choice, Um you know, versus trying to do the everything but the kitchen sink. I think dress. another thing is, I would not particularly count on someone helping me, uh-huh. unless it happens to be your mother. You know, <laughs> or some, but but what I'm saying is, a friend or someone that um, you've never worked with before. Oh, I can help you do that. Well, you know. And Maybe not. No. Don't. Yeah. Be careful. <laughs> be so careful. Just be so careful there. Also, um, don't call a don't call a sewing store. But two weeks before. Or, yeah. Yeah. Don't call a sewing store. Two days. Two weeks. Six days. Don't call anybody less than six months ahead of time and say, "Can you help me get this done?" Or you know, I would just have these people who said, "Well, an alterations person said it's going to be three hundred dollars. Can you help me?" It's just taking this up, and I mean. Ugh, ugh. I think I wrote about that in the first zine. Yeah. That was my little article. Uh, we talked about new new sewer fancy dress syndrome. Right. You know, how sometimes that'll be, like, all people want to make are, like, you know, beautiful well, things. When, well, you know, and, and this, this goes for anybody. Saying, when somebody says, oh, it's simple, you can do it in no time, then why aren't they doing it? Right. If right. it's that simple, they can go to Walmart, get themselves a machine that will never work right, right, and hem their dress. Right. Right? Right. I mean, it, it's just, it's so silly. Not yeah. that any of our listeners would do that. Yeah. I just want to say, I have more faith although, in you. <laughs> although, the self sewing War wrote post about people asking people to yes. sew, and in very inconsiderate ways. Yes. Like, I'll be over with my patio cushions, and you can help me, or you can help me cover them, and then, you know... The, she explains that the woman doesn't sew, or but, yeah. but she's going to help her. Yeah, we, you know, just so you all know, we had to close comments on that because it was like six hundred comments. Yeah, and every because everybody, <laughs> I mean, and everybody was saying the, the same, same thing, thing because yes. we all felt the same yes. way. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. was fabulous. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, those are the things I'd recommend. We would recommend when making your own wedding dress. You know, it can be a tried and true dress pattern for you that gets stepped up. A little bit. Right. Uh, you know. I think this is another thing. Mm-hmm. Don't offer to do someone's alterations, okay, unless you really know what you're doing. Yeah. Don't, I mean. That can be real. You might yeah, come Yeah, I mean, you something. might say, I can, I can look at your dress. Yeah. You know, but I can't promise you anything. I can look at it because you don't want to get hung up and freak yourself out oh, over well, somebody else's wedding. And this is something that can happen too. I'll just before we before we wrap things up here, I was asked to do a bustle on this on a friend's dress. Mm-hmm. She wasn't a super close friend, you know, but I was asked to do it and she'd sent me a picture of her dress and it was literally I was like, this is a one point bustle. Right. You know, and I got there and her dress was made out of a poly satin uh-huh. that was like super light. Right. You know, I mean, it could have been done with a safety pin. You know right, what I mean? Right. So I, anyway, you know, was was going there just to just to do this for her. Right. And then I looked. Oh, I remember this dress. I looked at yeah. her dress and I Is said. Is that that one-shouldered one? Yes. Yeah. I said, you need a hem. Yeah. You know, and this is. This happened in the other podcast too, right? You know. We yeah, this is that. sort of a theme. Yep. Yes. Oh, I don't know if I need a hem. I was like, well, are you wearing heels? Like, are these the shoes? Yes, these are the shoes. And then walk forward and, you know, can't see her toes. She stepped on it, da-da-da-da-da, and it needed a hem. And, you know, at- And sometimes it's only in the front. Yes. At that time, I was, like, intimidated by doing this. Right. I did not feel like I could do it. And I had to ask you right. we to did do it. Together, it. Yeah. And you, of course, you knew what you were doing, you know, uh-huh. and, and this I don't think was a big problem for you. But, you know, here I was saying that I could do this other part of it, and I didn't even know. I didn't even know what was going to happen. I didn't know that thing was going to happen. No, I could have referred her. I could have said, Well, I think what, you know, no. another thing that's common, you know, when people don't sew or uh-huh. understand alterations, you will have someone say, I only need a him. Yeah. Or I only needed this. Or it only needs to be taken up in the waist. And you get there and you look at the dress and you're like, no, it needs to be taken up at the shoulders. 
which in the stress might entail taking sleeves out and resetting them or something. You know, but they think they only need a hem. Oh, shoot, what does only a hem mean, well, too, right? Well, right, <laughs> right, right. But, you know, it it can, you know, it, unless you're right, what you have to say is, I need to see the dress. There. And I will let you know if it's something I'm, you know, I'm willing to tackle or yeah. I'm willing to take on. I will say that dress of hers... It was like the fabric, I, I think that if you ordered it, it would be real cheap fabric. It was cheap fabric. It was, though, It was lighter. a neat dress. It was lighter it was than dress. air. She didn't have to, I don't think mm-hmm. she felt, and it was, okay, so it was one-shouldered, yeah. and she was a uh, large-chested person, and, you know, I think that dress worked. It had like a flounce or and something. It had a flower. It had like oh, a rose. Oh, is that what it was? That, I think it was okay. a big rose up there. Okay. It looked like really pretty, and I was it like. It was really nice. When I felt the fabric, when I felt it, I thought, I wouldn't want to wear this up against my body, but shoot, for a wedding dress. It looked which great. Which yeah. maybe the closest thing to live theater that some people will ever do in their That's lives, right. okay, <laughs> is get married up in front of hundreds That's of people. True. Okay? That's true. You might, you might want to, like you said in the Say Yes to the Dress episode, treat it like a play. You know, it's right. got got to be able to be worn and moved in and danced in and look good and right. did, 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 all that stuff. Yeah, treat it treat it I like think a costume. I the other thing I would like to tell people about their wedding dresses is, yes, the hem will get filthy. Yes, someone will step on your dress. Yes, someone will spill something on your dress. <laughs> Don't worry about it. If it happens, it happens. Didn't Sam spill like, like a, wine, I like think. Like a whole bottle yeah. of wine on her dress. Or you know, um, <laughs> Hillary, her reception was in the grass. Yeah. You know, and she had a long dress. And she's like, oh, it's going to get grass stained. And my husband was the one that said, so? <laughs> he says, it's a throwaway dress anyway. And I said, oh, my God, you just said that about a just, dress uh. I spent like 40 <laughs> hours on. You know, but, but, but it is true. And guess what? I washed that sucker in the bathtub and it all came out anyway. It's really clean. Yeah. Um, but... You know, it's not going to – I remember a girl, and who it was, was Patty Chilton, my mm-hmm. born sister. And I was helping her get dressed for her wedding, and I looked, and there was a hole in her veil. Uh-huh. And I was like, do I tell her, do I not tell her, do I tell her, do I not – nobody else is going to see it. And I thought, I need to tell her so she doesn't see it and get And freaked. get upset, yeah. Right. And I said, okay, Patty, I said, there's a tiny hole in your veil. No one can see it. I just wanted you to know, you know, it's there, but it, it you know, it's not perceptible. Yeah. So don't worry about it. Yeah. And that's how I, and she went, okay. You no, know, that's what, that's how I felt with that girl's dress that, with that I fixed the, the yeah. cousin. Yeah. I thought, do I want to tell her how awful it is that no one told her to get a hem? Yeah. No, not at that time. Not right. I mean, <laughs> so, she yeah. was, that was 20 minutes before, before the ceremony. You and, know? and if you haven't heard the other podcast that Mallory's talking about, she went to a wedding and the bride fell flat on her face during photos pre-wedding, pre-ceremony, which was terrible for the bride. And Fortunately, no one got hurt and the dress survived yeah. and all this stuff. But Mallory had to send someone to Walmart for a sewing kit. This is another thing, too. Take sewing. Oh, gosh. Take a take, sewing take, kit to the. You take safety pins and, you know, thread <laughs> yes, and yes, all that yes. kinds of stuff. I should you. have taken one. Yeah, I should have known. Well, you know, we and it wasn't my have, wedding. We used to always have one in the car. We don't yeah. do that so much anymore. But, <laughs> um, yeah, you should have some stuff with you. That's for sure. And. How tall is she? Five five, five four, five six. She's five seven, I think. Okay, yeah. but you know, unless you're like five ten, you probably need a hem. Yes. Oh, Those gosh. dresses are made. You know, any dress, any wedding dress that's off the rack is made long enough so that it can fit somebody from five foot to five ten. Yeah. So you know, if you're not a five ten, you know, model, you know, size, it's probably too long. It only takes. An inch or two inches too long for you to trip. Right. I mean, it's almost like you could sue that bridal shop for negligence. Okay, <laughs> and they were well aware, I believe, that that dress well, needed they him. Have, <laughs> I mean, if they've ever sold more than one or two dresses, yes. I would think that they would know that it was not. Now, all right, sometimes you'll hear, "Oh, buy this crinoline. If you put this up, you won't need a hem." That's rarely true also. Rare, okay? Yeah, rarely. And if yeah. you're buying a crinoline that raises a dress two inches, I don't know how you're going to get around anyway. So. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I think that, that if, if you want to make your own wedding dress, you know, come into the group. 
yes. people people talk about and it. And there's a lot of people that have done it, so yep. they can tell you, you know, the the good things, the bad things, or the the things they never thought of that yeah. ha- would happen. And it, it just it will so depend on every individual yes. skill level, style, da 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 da, all that jazz. I think that this has been kind of a a good podcast to kind of work out these thoughts that we often we have so it many really thoughts. Need, yeah, and if you're getting married, you know, in two months. You don't have time to make your dress. There's other things you're going to have to do. I just really, unless you know, unless you have a pattern that you have made before and you know that you can whip it out, I wouldn't do it to myself. Yeah, I wouldn't. Do I it just to wouldn't myself. do it to myself. You know, I was thinking about how I made that sheer shirt dress. Right. That that took a lot of uh, time and attention. Yes. Okay. And you'd also made the pattern before. I had made the pattern before, but I sort of I thought, you know, I could make a dress like this. That could be like a wedding dress. It'd like, be I don't a know, beautiful but, wedding dress. You know, yeah. I, I could use it. But I thought the pressure was just that I was going to a sewing blogger conference. Yeah. It was not what would have been wedding pressure to me. It was a different yeah. occasion. And I just think that what we mentioned at the very start about pressure, it can be a lot more uh, a lot more real or a lot more a lot well, heavier in a turns, wedding. Well, it, it may turn your dream dress mm-hmm. that you dreamt of making into a nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Well, those are our thoughts on making your own wedding dress. You can find us on Instagram. We are ZD Sewing Studio. Uh, and you can follow Mom and her aerial escapades yeah. at ZD Donahue on Instagram. And sign up for the newsletter. I've been working really hard. I'm trying to make the newsletter just a wonderful thing that you like to get in your inbox of beautiful pictures and fun links. You can sign up for that at SoHere.com slash love note. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SoHere.com. 